Hello. Uh, this is a joint talk with Eli Ben Sasson, Ido Bento, and Inon Horesh. First of all, to set expectation, in this talk I will mainly focus on uh, the background and on, uh, and on our results. I will not go deep into details of how we achieved this result. You are welcome to talk with me after or check in the paper. <clears throat> okay, we start from the celebrated work of Baba et al. Uh, suggesting a user can send an execution, uh, can send a program for an untrusted server to execute and return a an result. But instead of only returning a result of the execution, this untrusted server uh, provides a proof of integrity showing this result is indeed the result of, of the program the user asked for. Additionally, it might be the case this program has a place for some auxiliary input. The prover can uh, add an input, a secret input, uh, into the program as well and make this proof a proof of knowledge of an input satisfying this program. The BFLS construction had many great uh, features. I would like to focus on two of them. One of them is succinct verification. The verification of the proof is polylogarithmic on the length of the execution. The other one is public coin randomness. It means that using uh, common compilers, the, uh, the prover could generate a non-interactive argument that can be spread and published to anybody, and anybody would be able to verify it with no trust assumptions. Recently, there is a lot of work on uh, systems uh, for designated, uh, designated computation, for uh, computation delegation. Uh, unfortunately, none of these works was able to achieve both succinct verification and using Pauling coin randomness. Two years ago, Psi was presented achieving both succinct verification and public coin randomness. But the performance of the Psi uh, system was not applicable for uh, real world usage. In this, uh, work I, in this work I present ZK Stark, a system which has both succinct verification, public coin randomness, and uh, having performance uh, appealing to real life usage. This is the message I would like you to take with you today, that Stark is both succinct verifiable with public coin uh, randomness and applicable to real life usage. This is why you will see this Venn diagram a lot. Let's continue uh, to some uh, distinction of the, of the Stark system from other systems uh, in the public coin or succinct verification which are not in the intersection. A very uh, major uh, difference is in the arithmetization technique used. One common arithmetization technique is to describe the program as a circuit. In this case, the verifier, as it has to know what the program is, is not expected to be sublinear in the circuit, in the circuit size. Such we cannot expect succinct verification. Uh, this uh, technique is indeed very common in the system which, uh, which have public uh, coin randomness, but no succinct verification. Another technique is very similar, but it takes the circuit describing the program and pre-process it uh, using some uh, setup phase. This setup phase outputs a succinct verification parameter that can be used by the verifier to verify a proof succinctly. Unfortunately, one of the drawbacks of uh, these techniques is uh, that in the setup phase, information, uh, if information leaks from the setup phase, it can be used to forge proof in many of the setups. Uh, it is suggested to use MPCs to do the setup to reduce this trust assumption. What we do in Struck is completely different. We are not describing the program as a circuit. Instead, we are describing the transition function as a circuit. You can think of it, the CPU that we have in every computer as a, some circuit. This circuit is constant and has some constant complexity, but it can be used to execute both short programs and very long programs. This is the case for Stark as well. We arithmetize only the transition function and we use it to verify both short traces and very long traces. This is where the succinctness of Starks come from. 
I would like to compare to other systems, uh, in, first of all, asymptotically. We can see the three last lines in this uh, table represent the work, uh, the work in the intersection. Uh, we can notice two great features in these three last lines. One of them, there is no red cell. It seems nothing here is really bad or awful. The other one, there is no green cell. It means there is still a lot of room for research. Uh, okay. Um, I will now continue by showing how specifically in this line of work we have improved from uh, Psi to Libstark General and Libstark with logarithmic RAM. When the last two lines representing both Libstark uh, are uh, for the following uh, scenarios. Libstark General is for general computations using uh, RAM access. Libstark with logarithmic RAM is an optimization that we have for the case a program accesses only at most uh, logarithmic RAM in the length of the trace. So first optimization. From Psi to Libstark, we, one, it's, it's one of the optimizations that we introduced in Libstark, is to use the Fry low degree testing instead of the Ben Sasson Sudan low degree testing. The Fry low degree testing was introduced last year by the same authors of this paper. When we are going to Libstark with logarithmic RAM, it, it, it might be a big technical, it's not familiar for a lot, but we drop a De Bruyne shuffle network which is used uh, to verify uh, RAM access is consistent. I will not dive uh, much deeper into this uh, because of lack of time, but this is an optimization uh, that we were able to do. I will now dive into uh, concrete measurements and comparison to other systems. For the concrete measurements, we wrote a subset sum exhaustive solver. This solver was written in tiny RAM assembly and compiled both to Psi and Stark uh, uh, constraint systems and to LibSnark circuit. The parameters of this LibSnark circuit were used uh, to estimate the performance of other circuit-based uh, systems. So here we can see that the LibSnark verification is more efficient than any other public coin, uh, uh, public coin randomness uh, system verification, just as we expected, and outperformed only by the LibSnark verifier, which requires a trusted setup. You can see that even though uh, the, the time it takes to verify a Stark proof is about tenths of a second, and it, it is insensitive to the length of the execution. So it wouldn't change much even for very long executions. Let's check the argument side, which is like the proof, but it is argument because uh, it requires some computational assumptions. We can see that the Stark proof is longer than, uh, many uh, than the proof of many other systems. It requires a few hundred of kilobytes. But again, it is insensitive to the length of the computation and it would stay this way even for very long computations. About the proving time, we can see that the prover uh, is faster than any other uh, prover we compare to, at least by a factor of 10. One of the reasons is that some of the systems require intensive uh, elliptic curve arithmetic uh, while proving, while Stark require only uh, finite field arithmetic, which is much easier for a CPU. Another reason could be just engineering. It might be the case that uh, more fine optimization to other prover would reduce this gap. I would like to summarize by reminding again that uh, ZK Stark has both succinct verification and public coin randomness, and its uh, performance is appealing for real life usage, and if this is not enough for you, it is quantum secure as well. Thank you. Uh, yes, questions. Uh, yeah, 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 sorry, it's my fault. <laughs> Uh, any questions? Oh, okay. Uh, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.
in the world. Are you plugged in? Yes. Uh, so the second part of this talk is about Libra succinct zero knowledge proofs with optimal prover computation. All right, thanks for introduction and thanks for Michael for the last talk. Now I'm going to introduce Libra, which is another zero knowledge proof system, and this is a joint work with Jiahen, Yupeng, Babis, and Dang. And I need to clarify that this work is different from the Facebook Libra project. And this work is submitted in February, so before Facebook Libra release. So it's a nice coincidence. As many talk previously mentioned, that zero knowledge proof allows the prover to convince the verifier about the validity of a statement, which is a validity of a statement, which a statement is model as circuit. And in our proof system, we have completeness, soundness, and zero knowledge properties. The completeness property says that if both parties are honest, then the verifier should always accept. The soundness property says that if prover is malicious, then the verifier should not accept except for negligible probability. And zero knowledge says that if verifier cannot learn anything about the witness W from the Prove pi. And there are three major criteria about the zero knowledge proof protocols prover time, prover size, and verification time. And the category we are focusing on is uh, protocol with succinct proof size and fast verification time. And there are many existing zero knowledge protocols that satisfy these properties. The most widely used one is SNARK and their implementation, LeapSnark. The LeapSnark supports all kinds of functions, and it has constant proof size and constant verification time. And even they are widely deployed in the real world, such as Zcash. However, they are slow improving things, and they have a function-dependent trusted setup. To address these problems, recent years, there are many protocols proposed by different groups. And here is a list of these protocols with full implementation and categorized by the underlying technique. Our protocol is an interactive protocol based on the framework proposed by vSQL from John et al. Actually, all of these protocols are following the same framework. Now I'm going to introduce the framework proposed by John et al. So first, we have a witness, and we have, the prover is going to commit to the polynomial that is defined by the witness. Then they will engage an interactive proof protocol that's called GCAR protocol, W efficient zero-knowledge proof. And this protocol will reduce the validity of the output Y to the validity of the committed polynomial defined by the input W. And finally, it will, the verifier will send a, a random challenge to the input. And the prover will open the random challenge, open the, open the input polynomial to this random point with a proof of correctness. This completes the whole framework. And all constructions follow the framework, and our main contribution is on the GKR protocol. First, we will introduce a linear time GKR prover for arbitrary layered circuit, which is optimal. Then second, we will add a zero logic, we, we will add a zero logic property to the GKR protocol without any computational overhead. So finally, we will get a zero large argument scheme with linear time prover and succinct proof size and verification. So for the rest of the talk, I will tell you some de technical details about this prover and about the zero large 
conversion for GKL protocol. So first, let's discuss about the linear time prover. The GKL protocol is based on the sum check protocol. So let me introduce the sum check first. And the sum check protocol is a fundamental building block for, uh, for, for many applications in cryptography. The goal for sum check protocol is to check the summation of the polynomial f over a Boolean hypercube that is equal to some claimed constant h. And this is an interactive proof protocol. And finally, it will reduce to a random point and verify you need to gain oracle access to this polynomial and evaluate it at this random point. So if we have oracle access, the proof size will be log n, and verification time will also be log n. Let's use, let's use the sum check as a building block, and let's introduce the GKR protocol. So I will use the vector location to, lo to represent a set of, uh, sorry, array of variables, and which size is log n. And so first, we have to define the polynomial used in the sum check protocol. Let's, def let's take an example, the input layer. This polynomial is a multilinear extension of the input layer, and it will agree on the input value on Boolean hypercube. For example, zero will, will agree on the first input. And for the rest of these polynomials, it will agree on the corresponding gate value. And to, to make it possible, we will use this relationship to define these polynomials. And this polynomial is related to the previous layers of polynomial. So let me explain it in details. The mult and the add is called the wiring predicate. The wiring predicate is defined as follows. If there exists a gate G0 and is connected to U0 and V0, then the mult wiring predicate will evaluate to one from this input. And otherwise, it will evaluate to zero. So in this formula, if G is a mod gate and U is the corresponding input, the, if, uh, the value of this, uh, the evaluation of this polynomial will be the multiplication of the following input. And the same for the add gate. So this, this polynomial you will, will always agree with the in, uh, gate evaluation. And the complexity of the GKL protocol is a sum of complexity of all of this sum check protocol. So in order to improve the GKL protocol, it's only need to improve the sum check protocol. So let me introduce some prior work on the sum check protocol improvement to make it a linear sum check protocol. So uh, Taylor introduced a dynamic programming based method in Crypto 13. And the first step of this method is to initialize a lookup table of the polynomial over the whole Boolean hypercube. Then it will use the dynamic programming to reduce the polynomial. The size of the next polynomial is equal to the half of the size of previous polynomial. So the total size is linear according to this formula. And the final block of this, this, this table is only consists of one, where, one, one element. However, in GKL polynomial, it's not efficient because we have two variables. Each of them have log n variable. So in total, it's two to two log n, which is n squared. And the initialization is n squared. So this is not efficient for practice use. 
So in our paper, we propose a new way to address this problem based on the uh, protocol proposed by Taylor. We divide the sum check into two phases. The first phase is only about the variable u, and the second phase is only about variable v. Here, we define a polynomial h as follows. So this thing, these two things will be equal, actually. So, and this part of the polynomial will only about u. So as uh, Taylor's protocol required, we will need to initialize a lookup table for this polynomial. And VU is quite simple since it's agree with the circuit evaluation. So we can, we can use the circuit evaluation as a lookup table. And H is not quite uh, not easy. But in our paper, we introduced a way to initialize H through a linear scan over the circuit. And for, since the time is limited, I will not introduce the initialization process for it too. Then we will run the Taylor's method. And then we will complete this phase, reduce the u to a randomness proposed by the sum check. Actually, it's a constant. So this part, this middle term, is a constant. And the remaining term is the actual work for the sum check. When we, are, we are doing the same thing as the free phase one, except for the h is defined in another way. And this mod function can also be initialized in a linear scan of the circuit. And then we run the Taylor's method again to complete the sum check. So now we have a linear time prover. Next, we are going to introduce the second technique, the zero logical protocol. In this section, we will introduce a, con uh, a zero logic conversion for GKL protocol without any computational overhead. So first, let me, introduce, let me tell you why GKL is not secure, because it needs some evaluations. In the every interaction, it will leak a polynomial evaluation about the, sum uh, about the current layer circuit the polynomial you are evaluate to a random point, and the, the ran, the, this evaluation will become a linear combination of the value of this gate. So it's not secure, it will leak some information about the gate value. And there are several prior work to address these problems. Hierarch ZK and ZK sql they use Kramer-Danger transformation, which will incur a computational overhead, because in Kramer-Dunga transformation, addition will become a multiplication, and multiplication will become exponentiation. This will incur like 10 to 100 times lower compared to the previous GQL protocol. So to make GQL zero knowledge without computational overhead, we will use some new approach that is masking polynomial, and is inspired by the Chiazza et al. So in their paper, they add a random masking polynomial delta to each, uh, to the original function f. And in this way, the, the, the sum check interaction will not leak any information because uh, this is a random polynomial. It will, looks like random. However, in their construction, delta is as big as f. And we notice that we need to do com polynomial commitment for each masking polynomial to ensure the evaluation of the masking polynomial is correct. So if delta is big, it's computationally hard to make the commitment and open the commitment at some random point. So this work will, is a main need for theoretical interest. And we need, really need to construct a delta that is small for, for computationally efficient. Let, let, let me give you an intuition about how it 
it is constructed. First, the leakage is small. The leakage of the whole GK protocol is only polynomialistic. So to cover the polynomialistic leakage, we intuitively only need a polynomialistically sized masking polynomial. And we have a nice construction about this masking polynomial. It's all of these variables are separated, and the size of the polynomial is only polynomialistic, so it will not incur any computational overhead. So with a linear time prover and with a conversion for GKL protocol to, to zero knowledge without any computational overhead, we will finally have a linear time prover and succinct verifier, succinct proof size, zero logic proof system. And concretely speaking, our proof time is the best among these protocols, and our verification time is less than one second. And our proof size is reasonable. And we also have an open source implementation on GitHub. You could check it out by yourself. And finally, it comes to conclusion. We have a linear time prover. We have efficient zero knowledge conversion for the GKL protocol. And combined, we have a linear prover, fast verification, fast, oh, sorry, succinct proof size, zero knowledge proof system. And thank you. I'm happy to take questions. <laughs> Questions? Uh, all right. Okay. So let's uh, thank the speaker again.